Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read from verse 6 to 9 of the New Living Translation. This is our Bible passage for the series, Favor of God. Today we want to look at the subtitle and indicators of favor in God. Last week we looked at walking in favor with God. Started off by finding favor with God. So after you have found favor with God and you are walking in favor with God, there definitely must be indicators which we call also signs that you have found favor with God. Genesis 6 from 6 to 9. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy the living thing. All the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. Verse 8, but Noah found favor with the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Amen. We have come a long way in this series. For those who are joining us, you know, at this finale of the series, uh, once we have all the previous uh, Someone's online, we will send the link so that you can be able to start from the beginning and follow through. Praise the Lord. Favor with God from the past definitions that we have given. One of the definitions we want to focus on today is that the favor of God is the approval of God. It's God's approval. Anybody who is seeking favor from another person is seeking approval from such person. And every child in any household wants to seek or to know or to have sign that their parents approve of them. Every child wants an assurance that they, appear, they have their parents' approval. Amen. Because whenever a child has the parents' approval, they are not hindered by anything. But when the approval is not there, the child is not, you know, does not have that confidence to do many things, does not have the confidence to achieve even greatness. They are limited because the approval is not there. That's why parents who want their children to go far, they let the parents they let the children see clearly that they approve of them. And they do this in so many ways, maybe by, by, by meeting the desires of their hearts. Amen. Maybe they desire a new form. You know, by meeting that desire, the parents are showing that uh, they approve. Amen. And in the academic pursuit also, they love that reassurance from their parents. We are doing good. We are doing that. Amen. And it keeps urging them to do even better. In Psalm 90, verse 17, Psalm 90, verse 17, from the New King James Version, the Bible says, And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. In the New Living Translation, the Bible it reads, uh, and may the Lord, our God, show us his approval and make our efforts successful. Psalm 19, verse 17. Yes, make our efforts successful. The, we, the, the children are the ones making the, uh, putting in the efforts. The approval of the parents makes that effort to be successful. In the same way as those children, every effort you put in results in success. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you see in that New Living Translation, that word efforts there is plural efforts. Amen. Because 
not everybody put in the same effort. And the result, the outcome is not the same. That's why that scripture says it's not of him that wills, of the one that runs. It's of God wishes mercy. Amen. It's not dependent on how well you are strong or how you can. No, no, no. It is God's input. It is God's approval, or to use the right word, the favor of God upon your effort that results in success. That when people see the success, they know, they, 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 they wonder how you made it because that success is not commensurate with the effort you put in. Amen. It's the same reason why some students they just read uh, their notes once and they go into a test and they will score a hundred. And there are some students that will have to read it, read it, cram it, memorize it, and do everything before they get that hundred. The difference is just God's touch upon it. I, I, I want to pray for somebody today. You may have been struggling in the past, but whatever efforts you put in this season, God will cause it to result in great success. In the name of Jesus. If you have found favor with God and you are walking in favor with God, it is important, it is expected even that there be signs indicators that you are living in his favor or his blessing. Amen. The favor of God cannot be upon you and you will not be singled out. It's not possible. For Israel, the favor of God was upon them through their lineage all the way from Abraham and they were singled out. Till tomorrow, they are still being singled out. Amen. Because that blessing, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord, it enriches. It enriches. It makes it so that it is not possible that people will deny that God is with you. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, from verse 1 to 6, Deuteronomy 28 from 1 to 6, the Bible makes it very clear. and We have touched upon some of these things. Last week, we, we discussed that for you to walk in favor with God, two words are prominent, forsake and obey. We listed those things that you will forsake and we mentioned those things that you will obey. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, the Bible says there that if you fully obey the Lord your God and you are careful to keep his commands, then it begins to tell you the tangible, undeniable evidence or indicators that will be yours. He says the Lord will set you high Above all the nations of the world, he will single you out. Says you will experience blessings. Blessings when you go out, when you come in, and if you read on, you see so many things that the Bible touches upon. Today, we want to bring this spirit of favor of God to a close as we look at four indicators, four signs that reveal that God's favor is upon the life of anyone. Four, you know, there may be more that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you when you do your own private study, but for the purpose of closing this message, four major indicators that if they are not showing in your life and you are walking in favor with God, you need to go before God and ask what is going on. Amen. You need to go prayerfully before God. Number one, indicator number one is the presence of God. The presence of God. You cannot find favor with God, walk in favor with God, and not dwell in his presence. The presence of God is the first indicator that you are found favor with him or that God's favor is upon you. His presence will be manifest. There will be physical manifestation of God's presence. 
you will experience the present. As a matter of fact, you will not want to do anything without his presence. In Genesis chapter 18, from verse 1 to 3, Genesis 18 from 1 to 3, the New King James Version, the Bible reads like this, Then the Lord appeared to him by the terrible trees of man, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the ground, and said, My Lord, if I have found, now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Amen. If I have found favor, let your presence remain with me. It's what Abraham was saying. He was saying, God, if I have found favor with you, if without a doubt you love me, be near me, let me enjoy your company. If you find favor with God, you will always want him to be near you. You yourself will always want to be praised. You will want to be in his company. David is a man that God himself declared as the apple of his eye. He declared him as somebody who will favor. David, Bible says, is always excited, always glad when there's, there's an opportunity to be where God is. He wants to enjoy the company of God. So much more that he said, listen, even if it's just for me to be the gatekeeper, even if I don't have to fully come in, even if I, I just want to be near, near to you. In Exodus 33, when you read verse from verse 14 downwards, Exodus 33 from verse 14 downwards, you to verse 17, God himself made a promise to Moses. He said, look, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My God says, that's like God saying, you have found favor with me. Everywhere you go, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. You would think that that would be fine. That the next thing you will hear is, Lord, I thank you. Amen. But Moses now turned. You see, sometimes Jesus, the Bible makes us understand that the promises of God, they are yes and amen. By Christ Jesus. They are yes and amen. And Paul told Timothy that every promises, every word of prophecy that comes to you, that you make warfare with them. You don't just let words be prophesied unto you that you don't do anything with them. He's saying you must place a demand on the word of God. Bible says the word of God, they are quick and they are powerful. That's good if you just want to make it as head knowledge. But for those who want to walk and experience the power of God, they place a demand on what God's word says. So God spoke to Abraham in Exodus 33, 14. My presence shall go with thee, and I will give you rest. Go to the next verse. Verse 15, see what Moses did with that word. He says, now therefore, verse 15, and he said, back to God now, and he said, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up ends. Can you put it in the New Living Translation? New Living Translation. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us. Don't make us leave this place. Go to verse 16. Why are you praying for this, Moses? How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence amongst us sets your people and me apart from all the people of the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let the others be jealous. 
But if God makes a promise for you, you've got to make more sale with them. You've got to place a demand on that word. Moses spoke back to God. You say you, you, your presence will go with you and you will give me rest. He said, okay. But if you yourself will not personally go, don't let me do it. And then he gave God the I know that I have found favor with you. But how will everybody know that I'm walking in favor with you if there's no sign? He said, let your presence be the sign, be the proof, so that they will know that you have set us apart, so that other Christians will know that I am your favorite. How many favorites of God are here? You've got to demand that his presence is present even more than your necessary food that his presence be with you that his presence go with you and not just those two that everybody will know that you are special it's not a, a matter of uh, being pompous as a matter of fact, is the lowest level of humility. Because what you are praying for, what you are demanding, is that they see God in you and not you yourself. That's what makes the difference. Every, as the children of Israel were going through the wilderness, the other nations were afraid of them because there was a presence of God in their midst. And what was the greatest indicator? They were full of joy. Amen. Oh, they were always joy. As a matter of fact, whenever the enemy hear them shouting, they run. Because they, they too, they, they even knew the scripture before the children of God. That in the presence of God, there's what? So when they hear their joy rising, and they can hear them shouting, they back up. So when you say you should shout, hallelujah, and your hallelujah is like a, you're just slipping in there like a comment. No. The shout of your hallelujah is an indicator to your enemy that God is with you. Otherwise, you will not be shouting like that. And awareness of the presence of God in your life is a sure indicator that you are found favor with him. So if you are not aware of the presence, you've got to do like Moses. You've got to ask him. You know, Moses is not just asking. He gave a reason. How will anyone know that I have found favor with you? Other translation would be, if I have found favor with you, there's no better way to place a demand on the word of God. If I have found favor with you, oh God, then let me experience your presence. Let everyone around me know that you are with me. He promised he will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody wants to go back to prayer with him. If I have found favor with you, oh God, let me always know that you are near me. That's how, based on his word, knowing fully well that you are walking in favor with him, to place a demand for your sermon. I want to know this. If you don't know, or if you are not experiencing it yet, pray for it. What did I say? Pray for it. In John chapter 14, verse 23, John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus speaking, he says, anyone loves me, that person who loves me will keep my commandments. And then he says, if they love me, and I see that they are keeping my commandments, he said, my father will reciprocate that love. And then myself and my father, we will come and make wherever they are our home. Amen. Remember last week we said you forsake and obey. 
<laughs> Obedience is what Jesus is talking about here. He obey my word. He said, not, I will not come again. I will bring the most high himself. And we will make, we're not just visiting. I hope we didn't say, you see, Jesus didn't say, we will come and say, hello, highly favored of God. And then we will move away. No, we say we will come and we will make our home. That scripture started with all. He said we will make our home with what? Each of them. Everyone who forsakes and obey, and there's indication that they are fully obeying. He said the presence will not just be a one in a time thing, it will be permanent. God the Father, God the Son become permanent resident. So that where you are, God is there with you. And the beauty of it is where the presence of God is, the enemy cannot come unless they have permission. They cannot come. It's, it's not possible. They just cannot come closer because demons, they tremble at his presence. They tremble at his presence. They come bowing out of their hiding places wherever the presence of God is. Imagine God's presence fully in your home. Amen. Even for that, imagine if everyone in your household is walking in favor with God. Even demons will not be able to fly in the area because the presence of God will be too much. Hallelujah. Indicator number two undeniable benefits by those around you. Amen. Undeniable benefits by those around you. When God's favor is in your life, it produces tangible, undeniable benefits in the lives of everyone around you. It will get to a point that people who are associating with you will know that they are being blessed because you are in their lives. Genesis 30 verse 27. Genesis 30 verse 27. Listen to what Jacob's uncle told him. Please listen to me. Labor replied. That's labor the uncle of Jacob talking to Jacob. I have become wealthy for the Lord has blessed me because of you. Amen. The Lord has blessed me because of you. That's what we call favor by association. Amen. People who associate with you, child of God, they must be blessed. If the favor of God is Where you walk, they are being blessed because favor has come there. You go for an interview, they did not pick you. Don't be, don't be angry. They don't want favor. Amen. Ah, when the one who recognizes the favor of God in your life employs you, even if you are a cleaner, amen. You know, in, in the story of Joseph, Joseph was the house, to put it in a literal way, the house board. Amen. Before the master saw what was going on and then making the CE, the, the uh, uh, chief operating officer in his home. Amen. It was an ordinary house board. Put that up in Genesis chapter 39 from verse 3. Genesis 39 from verse 3. Quickly, please. Potiphar, that's Joseph's master, noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. You see that? He started off by the first indicator is the presence of God. Potiphar noticed that God's presence is upon Joseph. And he made a conclusion. That's why the scripture says he realized. He made a conclusion. It must be the presence of God upon this 
guy that is making him to succeed in everything he does. Now, let me backtrack a little bit. He's the house boy in the house. Now, Potiphar has had other house boys before. And there are still others in his house. There's no complaint about Joseph. Joseph will do the dishes, not a single uh, China will break. That's my own illustration. Amen. They tell Joseph, we need somebody to go, you know, buy us supplies from the store. This is how much you, the budget we have. Joseph will go, he will come back because even in the store, some people will say, oh, you know what, don't pay for this one. You can keep this one. Or somebody on the line will say, you know what, I'll pay. And Joseph will bring money back to, to Potiphar. <laughs> how come he's the only one among every one of them that is just with him? The presence of God is with him. Verse 4 now. The Bible says, this pleased Potiphar. So he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household. Everything that he had. You see that? You want to be promoted where you are working? Find favor with God. Walk in the favor of God. Your bosses will see. It will, it will be, that's why we say undeniable. They will say that you are making them look, you make them look good in the presence of their directors or their vice president. That way they will become unfireable. They want to keep you. You're wondering, oh, they're always giving me more work than the others. It's because they see that everything you do is successful. And they want success because you being successful make them successful and it triggers up like that. And the same way it triggers up, it comes down. So that when they want to elevate someone, they just keep doing it. Bible says, Potiphar made him his personal attendant. Put him in charge of everything. And you see, Joseph didn't disappoint because it's not Joseph himself. It's the favor of God operating in his life. Go to verse 5. See what happened afterwards. Verse 5, quickly. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household. Why? For Joseph's sake, all his household affairs ran smoothly. His crops and livestock, they flourished. Why? For Joseph's sake. Hallelujah. Undeniable benefits by those around you. That they would always want to be close to you. That people you don't know will come to you and say, Bless me or just pray for me. Can you pray for me? Amen. The same way Pharaoh went to uh, Moses. Before you, you go, because Moses, my father, he pray for me. Amen. The one who is went into exile, the one who, when he came back to the country, should be thrown in prison. Is the one because the favor of God is there that they are asking to pray for. undeniable benefits by those around you. Those around you don't, don't need to be in direct contact with God. Amen. If the favor of God is upon you as a child of God. Remember the illustration I was using of that my daughter back in the days. Everyone who wants to find favor with me or be blessed by me. They don't need to come to me directly. They just have to make the one that has found favor in me happy. And as long as she's happy, everybody else is happy. If she's sad, everybody else will feel it. Amen. Undeniable benefits by those around you. Acts chapter 27 from verse 20 to 25. Acts 27, from verse 20 to 25. In that passage, 
Paul was in the company of so many prisoners in the ship, and there were severe storms. And everybody in the ship, they were scared. They didn't know what was going to happen. But even in that, God appeared to Paul and told him, don't worry, you will not die in this storm. And God went a step further and said, because of you, everyone in this ship will not die also. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when everybody was panicking in the ship, that you know, it's going to be the rest, they're going to die. Paul told them, everyone who remains in this ship, as long as I'm in this ship, you will not die. Some of the shipmen and the captain, they brought the lifeboat, they wanted to go out. He reminded them again, it's only the people that are in the ship with me. It's where I am. Amen. I'm the favor of the Lord. I'm the one carrying his presence. And it will not allow me to perish. And everybody who is with me will not perish. So they cut off the lifeboat and let it go. And everybody stayed. And by the time they got to the shore, not a single person that was on that boat died. Everybody floated. The ship was wrecked, but nobody drowned. Because one that was in favor with God was there. You know how many calamities would have happened to those around you, if not because you have favor with God. We live in a city two years ago where people were being buried by the thousands. That the mug was overflowing. That they did not have a place to keep dead bodies. And you are alive. Why? The year before, God just announced that, you know, you know Mr. Assembly, you have favor with me. And he sent me, he said, go and tell my people all we were. Well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Four words. And for every one of us, we lived through that experience. Not a single person dead because of COVID in this assembly. And I say this, you know, not because, not as somebody who knows how God operates all the time, but as somebody who has a found mercy. Because I, I know in when we have our pastors meeting, how many had to bury their members because they died from COVID. So what, what, what did you, what was your defense? What did you do that nobody died? Is it because you know how to wear masks? Or you know how to do hand washing? Or you just stayed in your house and did not go out at all. People stay in their house and still die from COVID. But the favor of God, especially when God reveals his mind, can keep one in safety. Nobody died in that ship. Because God told Joseph, um, Paul and he announced it. Undeniable benefits by people around you. Because you're a child of God, you are good at praying, at studying the word of God, at following, obeying God. For your sake, your friends, your relations, people who are connected with you, they prosper. The ones that are smart and knowing, they will want to always have you in their company. Amen. I said something, you know, offhand when we started this month, and I know somebody is still going to receive that testimony. When I prayed, and I said, let me pray for somebody that, you know, they will want to form a board. They will say, they, they will come and beg you, come and be part of our board. Yeah. You may not even have the experience. They say, we know there's something different about you. We want you on this board. We're prepared to pay whatever it costs to have you. On that board. And true to fact, once you get there, because you are the favor of God, they just see everything is going smooth. They see that things are different because of you. Undeniable benefits by those around you. Number three, indicator number three. 
moving quickly now. Continuous personal refreshing. Continuous personal refreshing. When a person has favor with God, when the favor of God is upon the life of anyone, they will experience times of personal refreshing. Refreshing there, what I mean by that is a renewal continuously. A renewal of joy, a renewal of peace. There will just not be opportunity for you to be totally, completely down. In Proverbs chapter 19, verse 12, Proverbs 19, verse 12, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says the king's anger is like the roar of a lion. It says, but his favor is like dew on the grass. Every day, grass suffers the heat from the sun. But by the time the, the dawning of, of the morning comes, there's fresh dew upon the grass. That fresh dew, what it does is it sustains the grass so that the grass is not burnt, but begins to uh, absorb necessary ingredient from the sun to become greener and greener. It's, it's always, every morning, they do. In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 15, Proverbs 16 and verse 15, the, 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 the Bible puts this another way. So when the king smiled, there's light. He said, his favor refreshes like spring rain. Hallelujah. It refreshes like spring rain. I know what that spring rain feels like. I remember once we went on vacation somewhere and they have like a waterfall. When you're underneath that waterfall and the water just falls on you, you don't want to leave. Amen. Nobody wanted to leave. Until we start, okay, okay, one more time, one more time, and then we go. And then we go underneath it, the water pours all over. And then as we are going, we say, one more time again, one more time again. Because, and that's what the favor of God is like. It refreshes, like spring rain. And I like how that scripture started. It said, when the king smiles, there's no way you have found favor with God that God's countenance will not shine upon you. God will always smile. Apostle Paul said, that's the reason why we are able to get whatever we want. We do what pleases him. When somebody is pleasing, smile. And when God smiles at you, when you say, Lord, I want, even before you say what you want, that's what the Bible means. Say, why they are yet praying? Amen. Why they are yet praying? The one who is in favor with you, if he calls it, uh, uh, auntie, can, can I please can you please give me I say, what do you want? Your wallet is out. You're flipping through the bill. How much do you want? Because your countenance is always happy. They can't do wrong. Amen. They can't do wrong. Even when you're upset. Amen. You know, somebody who has found favor with you can upset you. I'll give you examples. You have your children. Amen. You may have just finished scolding that child. Why did you do that? You should not be doing that. You know, maybe you even smack a little bit. Amen. And then a few seconds later, he said, Mommy, can I have ice cream? <laughs> even though you are peace already. See the person and discipline and, uh, and you're still uh, you, you, you do all you want to do. And then maybe the child just sit down and watch you. Go and have ice cream. <laughs> It's favor. Amen. Scripture says it's anger, it's but for a moment. It says, but joy comes. Amen. It's the favor of God. In Psalm 92, when you read from verse 12 to 14, Psalm 92, 12 to 14, the Bible tells us what happens to the righteous. And the righteous, when we started with favor, how you can find favor with God. The first thing we mentioned is your conversion. That's what gives you right standing with God. 
Say they are strong. They flourish. They flourish. The same thing in Isaiah 41, when you read from verse 8 to 14. Isaiah 41 from verse 8 to 14. You can write that one down and read it. That scripture started with God saying, declaring that Jacob, you are my chosen one. You are my favorite. Amen. Even before birth, when Jacob and Esau were still struggling with them, we are twin. God already favored one. Amen. Favored. Say, I have called you. Say, don't worry. Don't be afraid. That's refreshing. When God tells you not to be afraid, there's no need. Say, be courageous. Keep going. I'm with you. I'm with you. Go to verse 11. See what God says will begin to happen. That can refresh somebody. But see, all your angry enemies lie there. They are confused and irritated. So anyone who opposes you will die and come to know. Just feel. Go to verse 12. Then you will look for those who are, are angry at you, those who have been your enemy. You will not see them. They will, they will have, when they those who attack you will come to nothing. Yeah. Nothing. But those who support you, they enjoy the second benefit we mentioned. For your sake, they just begin to flourish. To flourish. To flourish. Go to verse 14. In verse 14, you see the Lord calling things. I know you are the only one. I know you don't have courage. I, I know when they do it, Running I know that when challenges rise like this, you will go and hide and hide be shaking somewhere. So don't worry. I will help you. I'm not sending angels. I will help you. Because I am the Lord. I am the one who redeemed you. That's I'm the one who has put my favor upon you. I will help you. I will help you. And then finally, indicator number four is that the work of your hand to be blessed. You find favor with God. You are walking in the favor of God. The works of your hand will be blessed. So before people say, oh, I have found favor with God, so I'm just going to hold my hand and see. No, God does not sanction laziness. Amen. That's why I do not say your children will be blessed. No. Say the work of your hands. What that means is everything you lay your hand upon to do will prosper. And because the favor of God is upon you, everyone around you, if they want to enjoy benefits, undeniable benefits, tangible benefits, anytime they see you lay your hand on anything, they will come. How can we support you? How can we be involved in this? Is there anything we can do to help you with this project you have started? And then you see that out of no year, Everything you need begin to come your way because they recognize the favor. Whatever you do will bless. Job chapter 1, verse 10. Job chapter 1, verse 10. The Bible speaks here. This is Satan himself talking. So you have always put a wall of protection around him and his own and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich. He is. I pray that in the name that is above every other name, Amen. the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. that your enemy will soon confess that the Lord has made you rich. In the name of Jesus. In the King James Version, you have blessed the works of his hand and his possessions have increased in the land. Possession has increased in the land. Let me pray for another person. Maybe they have not noticed because you don't have possession in this land. But in the name that is above every other name, the mighty name of Jesus Christ, very soon, the enemy is going to testify that your possessions in this land has increased. That your properties are all over the land. In the name of Jesus Let me close with Psalm 19, verse 17. 
The Bible in the New International Version says, May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon you and establish the work of your hands. It is the desire of God for those whom he has put in favor of God to have rest. In Sunday school this morning, we were teaching us about pressure and how pressure, depending on the type of pressure, can result in all kinds of disorders, including depression. One way to change depression away is to walk in favor with God. But Jesus says, whatever I ask you to do, do it. And your obedience causes rest to come. It's favor will rest upon you. And when his favor is resting upon you, everything you do will prosper. Little, little things you do, you will just prosper. If you don't believe me, go and look at the history of the Israelites. From Old Testament to New Testament to even our days till tomorrow. Anywhere they gather, whatever little things they do, prosper. Let them put their money together and say, we want to buy this property. Once they buy that one property, before you look for that, they own the entire street. They are not lazy. Amen. You have the favor of God with you. Don't be lazy about it. Don't be afraid to take a step. Even if you take the step and you fall, because you have favor with God. This Bible says, even if the righteous fall, how many times, man? He said, God will always uphold him. Amen? Which parents here have a child who is crawling, and that child begin, wants to begin to take a step at the fall, and you just say, you don't need to, to, to walk. Just stay down there on the school the child. No. Before the child stumble, you have run there to the phone. Let the little child stumble there. Now everybody here will want to support you. And steady the feet. So you may not get it right the first two times. But because God's favor of God is upon you, the Bible says that the, 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 the God orders the, the, the step of the righteous. Amen. He's the one that will order it. That's okay, okay, okay. Uh, don't put it. That this is why you fell. Put the leg here. Amen. And this, this is why that didn't prosper. Okay, focus on this. And before you know it, your path begins to shine more and more and more and more. If you are not noticing this indicator, then you go to place a demand on the word of God. Scripture says, I and the children that the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders. Your children should manifest the favor of God. Everything about you should manifest it. You know that it's so great that even God says that even your animals are not permitted to suffer when the favor of God is upon you. That scripture says, none shall lose their young. Amen. That scripture says, he said, no one will, will, will want their mates. Then the Spirit of God will bring them, will bring them together. It doesn't matter how hard the enemy tries, the favor of God will be upon you. Psalm 106, verse 4, Psalm 106, verse 4. The Bible says, Remember me, Lord, in your favor towards your people, visit me with your salvation. Let's bow our heads. The first step to finding favor with God is accepting the way He has created for you to come into His favor. For the Bible tells us in the book of Acts that there is therefore now no other name by which anyone on this earth can be saved. Except by the name Jesus. 
And Jesus himself says in the book of Revelation, I stand at the door and knock. If any open unto me, I will come in and I will stop with them. The Bible makes us understand that God does not want us to perish, but that anyone who would believe or even receive Jesus as Savior would have life and have it even more abundant. If you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, you are outside of the favor of God. There's an opportunity for you to come inside today. All it takes is for you to receive him as a savior. If it is your heart desire, whether you are in person here or online, you want to receive him as your Lord so that you know without a doubt that his presence is with you. Lay your hand on your chest and sincerely just tell the Lord. I'm sorry for my sins, for my sinful ways. I surrender to you today. Have mercy on me. Wash away my sin. Cleanse me of all my sins. Save my soul. Write my name in the book of life. Give me grace to walk with you and to please you all the way. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.